Hello everyone and welcome back to Med which may simple. The topic for this video is suggested by Kavita on my Med which may simple page. Thank you so much. So in this video we're going to see about acute myeloid leukemia which is also known as AML. Now let's begin. So in myeloid neoplasms there are three main divisions. This includes acute myeloid leukemia, myelodysplastic syndrome, and chronic myeloproliferative disorders. So in this video we're going to see about acute myeloid leukemia. Acute myeloid leukemia is a tumor of hematopoietic progenitors that are formed due to mutations that affect the differentiation leading to accumulation of immature myeloid blasts in the marrow. So what happens is um, there will be mutations that will affect the differentiation of the precursor cells in the bone marrow that will lead to accumulation of immature uh, precursor cells uh, in the bone marrow which are known as myeloblasts. This is more common in people over 60 years of age and the incidence increases with increase in age. So let's see about the classification of acute myeloid leukemia. So there used to be an older classification which is known as FAB classification and now it's outdated and the WHO has recently proposed a classification to classify AML and that looks very complicated in textbooks and I made it very simple here and you just need to know these four classes according to a recent WHO classification. The first one, class one, is AML with genetic aberrations. This means um, in the AML types in class one um, there has been a identified genetic aberration such as translocation of 1517, inversion 16, etc. which we'll be talking about in a couple of minutes. Class 2 includes AML arising from myelodysplastic syndrome. Class 3 is therapy related AML which is AML due to um, treatment due to few treatments such as cancer chemotherapy or radiotherapy. So what happens is if a patient with any malignancy is treated with cancer chemotherapy or radiotherapy, that patient is more prone to develop AML and that AML is class 3 which is therapy related AML. And all other types which are not otherwise specified or if we don't know much about it in detail are given in class 4. So this is the WHO classification of AML and that's so simple. So let's see about the class 1 uh, of AML. That includes um, the AML with known genetic aberrations. So here we have put the most common uh, AML with uh, the most common genetic aberrations. The first one being translocation of 8 to 21. Second one is inversion of 16. And the third one is translocation of 15 to 17. All these three are equally important. However, from the exam point of view, the most important one is translocation of 15 and 17. The translocation of 15 and 17 is known as um, acute promyelocytic leukemia which is abbreviated as APL and that's very important to know. Um, in acute promyelocytic leukemia what happens is there will be a mutation that will lead to uh, formation of a fusion protein known as PML or AR alpha fusion protein and that will affect the maturation of, maturation of the uh, precursor cells. So this, will, this can be successfully treated with a drug which is known as all trans retinoic acid which is abbreviated as ATRA. There are two main things which happen in AML uh, which is responsible for its pathogenesis. The first one is activation or overactivation of the growth factor signaling pathways that will lead to increase in the cell production and the second one being transcription factors aberrations. So since the transcription factors are affected, um, maturation or further development of the precursor cells will be, will be affected. So what I'm trying to say with these two points is that there will be overproduction of cells in the marrow, uh, but differentiation of those uh, precursor cells into mature forms will not take place and that will lead to accumulation of immature precursor cells in the bone marrow and that's where you develop acute myeloid leukemia. 
So the main morphology which you observe in acute myeloid leukemia is uh, when you do a bone marrow biopsy, you'll be seeing at least 20% of myeloid blasts in bone marrow. The myeloblasts are the uh, immature precursor cells uh, which are found in AML and more characteristic features of the myeloblasts are that um, they contain granules which are peroxidase positive and they are azurophilic granules. And there are also slender rods uh, which can be seen in these myeloblasts which, uh, which are pathognomic to AML which are known as R rods and it's very important to remember uh, arrow rods. If you see a question with arrow rods in it, uh, it, it is um, almost, it, it is mostly AML. So the number of myeloid blasts in blood is variable, which means there can be uh, n number, there can be 10,000 to 1 lakh uh, myeloid blasts in blood in AML, but that does not tell us the severity of the condition. So all you need to do is a bone marrow biopsy and you need to see the myeloid blasts which are present in the bone marrow and that's what tells you um, the exact clinical picture that's happening in the patient. So immunophenotype is um, the diagnostic test which is used to identify uh, the cellular antigens which are present over the tumor cells and in AML the precursor cells are positive for two main uh, CD markers which are CD33 and CD34 so these are specific for immature cells immature myeloid cells or myeloid blasts the clinical features of AML is very easy to understand and remember um, basically there are features of marrow suppression or bone marrow failure that occurs due to um, exhaustion of the marrow, due to overproduction of the cells, due to increased growth factor signaling, and that too the uh, the marrow doesn't product uh, that doesn't produce effective cells. So the function of the marrow is not proper, and that will lead to decrease in RBC count, leading to anemia, and there will be decrease in uh, leukocyte production, that will lead to neutropenia and that will be defective platelet production that will lead to thrombocytopenia. Anemia will give the patient symptoms such as pallor, as pallor is a sign but uh, symptoms such as fatigue, tiredness, etc. Neutropenia will lead to uh, recurrent infections and poor immune state of the patient and thrombocytopenia will lead to recurrent bleeds uh, such as uh, oral mucosal bleeds, etc. Uh, the patient can also develop skin uh, petechiae and those are features of thrombocytopenia. So the prognosis depends upon uh, what class of AML the patient is having. For example, if the patient has class 1 AML, which is AML with non-genetic aberrations such as translocation 821 or inversion 16, the prognosis is favorable. The prognosis of um, a patient in a class 2, uh, which is um, AML, uh, developing from MDS kind of things, is poor. If the patient develops AML uh, associated with MDS, the prognosis is poor. And if the patient uh, develops AML, which is therapy related, that is the AML which is acquired following cancer chemotherapy or radiotherapy, the prognosis is further very poor. And if the AML is not otherwise specified, that is if it belongs to class 4, um, the prognosis is intermediate. That's it for today. Hope you understood uh, the basic concepts and important concepts in acute myeloid leukemia. And you can help me to make more videos by visiting patreon.com slash made simple. And you can donate any amount you want. And then if you donate $5 or above per month, you can gain access to all my lecture slides and Patreon exclusive videos. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment your suggestions below, share this video to your friends and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you.